So what are some of the things that have really helped me in my career and getting ahead in the world of geospatial? Well, in this video, we're going to talk all about that. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Juliana mcmillan Wilhoy, and I call myself a cartographer of change for both people and organizations. And this morning, I'm enjoying my nice cup of coffee from a cup that you can actually grab in my Etsy shop. And I just thought I would chat with you a little bit about my career journey and some of the things that I think that have really helped me. I recently recorded a pretty long video in which I go all through my career journey, starting in high school and ending now in the spring of 2022. And so I just thought I would share a few things that have really, really helped me get to be where I am while enjoying a cup of coffee. So the first thing that has really helped me is having mentors. I know that this really goes without saying that, that mentors make a world of difference, but they do. So I had a fantastic a professor in undergrad and he really helped mentor me, gave me connections to people and was just a fantastic friend and someone who I, I am deeply, deeply grateful for in terms of their role in my life. Thank you, Noah Tolley, for that. I also had the opportunity to do guided mentored research with a professor while I was an undergrad, Dr. Sandra Yorman, and that was my first time really applying GIS. And again, I'm super thankful for that experience. And so I've also had mentors throughout my career. Jeanette Bulkin, in my first internship, was a fantastic mentor. I was part of a mentoring program when I worked for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. And now I would say I have less of a clear mentor in my current job role, but I have mentors who are outside of my role and in the field. And I think that that's something that maybe I can share a little bit with you about. So that oftentimes it can be like, well, I don't have a mentor at work. How in the world do I find one? So there are plenty of geospatial mentoring programs. There's uh, does one, I believe that the Australian geospatial group does one. You don't have to live in Australia to do that. Women in geospatial, women in GIS have mentoring programs. I have a coaching program where I come alongside of you and we work on something very particular. So those are sort of formalized mentoring or coaching programs that is one option for you. Another option though is just getting to know people in the geospatial space. So I've done that through getting active on Twitter and active on LinkedIn. On Twitter, you can use the hashtag GIS chat to find people. If you are trying to get active on LinkedIn, you can connect with me link in the description box below, and just sort of see the people who I begin interacting with. But through that, I built friendships with people. So I have some great friends in the geospatial industry who are, you know, I guess farther ahead of me in terms of like their career progression. And they are people who I now have on text and speed dial who I am able to text and say, hey, I'm struggling with this thing, whether it be technical or just wanting to talk through a career issue. And those are people who are willing to help me. So if you are starting out in the world of geospatial and you, so say you're a one person shop and you really want to build connections, but you also want a mentor, I really recommend you either sign up for a mentoring program, but also get involved in some of the online geospatial spaces. And you can begin to build relationships with people who they may not be a formal mentor per se, but they but there's a relationship that's there and they are going to be willing and eager to help you. I host a weekly conversation on Twitter spaces and I'm always just really thankful for, for everyone who comes, but just the questions we get to answer and the, the feedback that we always get from people about how we're able to help them understand and how to build their geospatial careers. So this thing one was finding a mentor. Thing two, being curious. My husband says that I have an insatiable curiosity, which is really unhealthy. I don't think it's unhealthy, but yes, I am very curious. And I don't necessarily think, unfortunately, that curiosity is something that can be taught, but curiosity can be fostered. So when I look at data, I'm always trying to ask why? Why are we seeing this in the data? Is there something wrong with the data? Did I do something wrong? Did somebody else do their job wrong? Like, what is going on here? I'm asking consistent questions of people, but I'm also trying to understand, tell me about your job. Oh, you get to do that? Well, that's cool. I want to do that. Or you do that? Nope, I am not interested in doing that at all. So I'm asking questions about data. I'm asking questions about processes. I'm being really self-reflective in terms of being like, that's for me. 
that's not for me. I'm getting feedback and input from a lot of people. So I think that being able to foster that curiosity is just going to be really helpful. I have a liberal arts background. Talk all about this in my career journey video linked in the description box below about how I have a non-traditional path in GIS. I have the equivalent of one semester of formal GIS training. So I've learned everything on the go. So I've just had to keep asking questions and applying things and failing, right? Like it maybe would have been more efficient for me to have taken a GIS class, but I feel like I have a way broader understanding about the how geospatial technology works by just being curious, trying to apply it, but also by bringing in my outside knowledge. So I have an undergrad degree in political science and interdisciplinary studies where I did a lot of urban studies work. So I have this idea about how cities and how people work. And I bring that knowledge to bear when I'm answering questions. That is part of why I love safe graph data so much is because I think that I'm able to blend really well my understanding of people with the work that safe graph does. And so Anyway, continue to be curious in everything that you do. All right, so we've talked about mentoring. We've talked about the importance of curiosity. The next thing that I think is really important as you build a geospatial career is that you are teachable. So in part because I knew so very little about GIS, I was willing to learn from anyone and ask questions through that curiosity but I was willing to be teachable. So I, when I coach clients, I've had a number of clients who are paying decent money to have a session with me and they don't particularly seem to be teachable. Like they don't, they essentially are wanting me to confirm what they already think and know. So saying that they don't need a portfolio. I do think that they need a portfolio or making, you know, saying like, okay, well, I'm just gonna do it this way. And it's fine for you to have a, a difference of opinion from me, but it's just this broader idea of, you're an expert in something, I'm wanting your advice, but I'm not actually going to take it. So there's there's a high level of humility with that. And that perhaps I may not accept what you know somebody says, but at least in that moment, I would really encourage you to to make it seem like like you are totally teachable and that you are, you know, wanting to to learn and absorb from your mentor, from your boss, from whomever. The fourth thing that I'd say, right, is having a good boss makes a world of difference. I've seen a bunch of things recently on LinkedIn about how the job matters less and the boss matters a lot. I don't know if I fully agree with that because I think that if you're doing an, like if you're doing a job that you're not interested in, even if you have the best boss in the world, you're probably not going to care a lot about it. But I've had absolutely fantastic bosses and that has made a world of difference for me. So I've been really open about our journey with infertility and I would not have been able to go through the treatments that I went through over the course of the past year if I did not have the support from my boss. I had to, I had complicated surgery and I was out of work for a week. I needed to miss a lot of work because of doctor's appointments. And that was like a way that a boss was really supportive of me on a personal level. But I've also had bosses just be really supportive of me in my career and giving me op opportunities because I had proved that I was a really good worker and they wanted to keep me around, but that opportunities that, that served them well and served me well. But that I had people who were in the same organization who were in very similar positions who did not who were not given the same opportunities as I was because they didn't have as supportive of management. And so I'd really encourage you to ask really hard questions when you are applying to try and understand about your boss. I have another video linked in the description box below all about things that you should consider when you're applying for a job. Sorry, I did not mean to like be promoting all my other videos today, but they they happen to be super relevant and so I'm just going to share them. All right, so having a having curiosity, being teachable, have it, having a mentor, having a good boss, and the final thing that's really hard is actually being brave. So bravery is something that has given me a lot of options in my career. And I would say there's ways that right now I am less brave and I'm okay with that, but that I was brave early on in my career. So I had only ever lived in the Chicagoland area, went to college where my dad taught, I, but then I moved across the country. I didn't quite realize like what a brave and scary thing that was until I did it. And it was really hard because I had just sort of 
grown up in the same community, known people, like had lived within a, you know, 15 mile radius my entire life. And that, that was really difficult. But I'm so, so grateful that I did it and that I was brave to move to, to California to work for Esri. Same thing for moving to Bulgaria, moving to Washington, D.C. There was a level of bravery that I had to take risks within my career to get more opportunities. Quitting my job to start to start a business, starting a YouTube channel, right? All of those things require a level of bravery and courage that I think is really admirable and something you need to have to, to be able to get ahead. But also bravery comes by saying, I'm going to do this analysis. Like, I'm going to do something that hasn't been done before, or it may fail. Bravery comes by saying, hey boss, I don't actually think that the way that you're going about this is the best way. I think we should be doing it this way. That's bravery, and that's really important to be able to demonstrate and to show. And the, the final thing that I would say goes with that is just you know being brave to do stuff that may fail, but that going above and beyond. So doing that analysis that really has the opportunity to, to set you apart and that, you know, hopefully you have a good boss and hopefully you have a good mentor that you can talk about how you can talk about that. But I did some analysis early on in my career that I had no idea if it was going to work. It didn't necessarily work out all that well, but actually put me in a really good position because it showed all of these different characteristics, right? It showed that I was brave to do something that we weren't sure if it was going to work. It showed my curiosity. It showed my teachability. So anyway, those are uh, some of the things that I think have really helped me in my geospatial career. I'd love to know in the comments below, what are things that you know have, have helped you in your career? I'd also love to know, you know, what do you think of this video? What other videos would you like me to produce? As always, liking this video and subscribing to my channel are two really small ways you can help encourage me to keep producing geospatial career content. As always, I am rooting for you and I am cheering for you. Hope to see you at an upcoming free networking mappy hour event and keep being mappy.